Action for you here, stage two, and it is Leonard Gates. We've already seen two Americans on this stage today. Jules Van Dongen missing match darts and going out early. Danny Lorby coming through his game. Now the turn of Leonard Gates. He's already beaten Conan Whitehead to get to this stage. Up against Reese Griffin, who has also had to win to get to this stage. Beat Harry Gregory, making a return to the UK Open after not qualifying for the last couple of years. But now a tour card holder for the first time, so gets a spot in automatically and has a chance to put himself into the third round. Fascinating that this is Leonard Gates' debut in this tournament. I follow a lot of players and think, well, surely they've played the UK Open at some point, but Gates on debut, beating Whitehead, now gets a crack at Rhys Griffin, who made his debut Leonard 10 Leonard years ago. Leonard to throw first. Game on. I think there was a lot made recently of Gates going to the Eight. Circus Tavern trying to do the senior slam. Had he won that tournament, he would have won everything that the seniors had to offer in the last 12 months, but that was Hendo's title. But now he comes to Minehead, another mecca of darts, red-shirted and looking for a little bit more in the way of darting success because Gates is one of those players over the last two years who's played at maybe every major venue that this sport has got to offer. Lakeside, Tavern, Ali Pali, Minehead and lots of others. Yeah, he's uh, ticking them all off. 57. Comes here fresh from winning the shoot for the moon final against Danny Bagish. I was watching that online. Were you? I was fascinated. Where was that being played? Somewhere in the States. Oh, it, I think it was in Alabama. Fair enough. Bates, the Texan. Undoubtedly a quality player. I remember going to Q School and averaging in the 100 teens in one particular game. He's got this ceiling. He also has a complete inability to work out the numbers. So bearing in mind we've got no stat screen for this. We're working on a rather ad hoc camera system and it's Leonard Gates. He leaves himself tops in the end. Those darts are wobbling quite a lot when they hit the board. I'm wondering if he's got a little bit of a flexible point going on here. Because they're going in a little bit flatter than usual. Look at these darts when they hit the board. There's a bit of a wobble there. 20. They don't look like the flexi points. It might just be how he's throwing them. Oh, wobbling there. Yeah, Reese has struggled with his line in this first leg. He's hit that one segment four times at least. That's why he's 120 head behind. 20 points required. Leonard straight in. 1 0. You've got a favourite tournament name from the plethora of great tournament names from. United States and Canada. Uh, Uncle Barry's big time tungsten Hootenanny, which I think was a rejected name for the Premier League of Darts. 45. Uh, but uh, Leonard Gates, I believe, is also uh, a former champion of the Hatter and Hill. Uh, which I don't know where that was played either. I like the Choo Choo Classic. Oh, the Choo Choo Classic, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, that one's played in Chattanooga, Tennessee. One. Oh, no. Well, everything oh. seems to be going the way of Gates at the minute. I just looked at the list of tournaments, Gates won. You got another good one? Yeah, but hang on. Oh, five perfect darts from Leonard Gates. Uh, last year, among his many titles, uh, was the Hedgehog Hellraiser men. <laughs> oh, no. The Hedgehog Hellraiser. Marvellous. That's a good one. Didn't He hasn't won the Groundhog Open, has he? And yes, he has. Yes, he yeah. won that. he's won that this oh, year and up. last year. He defended his Groundhog Open title. I think we've got to up our game, you know. I think the Americans have got this one nailed. Oh. 81. Leonard, you require 84. Marvellous stuff. It's marvellous stuff from Leonard Gates here. Double 12. 
is there. This is proper stuff from Leonard Gaines. Little Lemon Darter. I'll tell you who's watching this one right now. That's Jim Williams, because he plays the winner of this one. And this is the last second round match on stage two. After this, it will be games to put yourself in the hat for the draw in between the afternoon and the evening session. We will start with Martin oh, Lukman against Jermaine Watamina after this. This is where things start getting serious. Six. At least Leonard didn't have to pack any dart shirts when he came over here from Texas because when you are a qualifier, your remit is to wear the red. Yeah, it's all taken care of for you. As long as it fits, you're all right. And that is a fine fit for Leonard Gates. I'll tell you what is pretty fine at the minute. Neil Zonneveld versus Vessel Nyman over on the outer boards. It's 3-2 Nyman. They're both averaging. Well, it's 108 for Nyman at the minute. It's 106 for Zonneveld. It was a couple of points higher a moment ago. Sometimes better to play the devil that you know instead of the devil you don't. It, it works an awful lot, Dan, when you're playing someone, you know their pace, you know them personally, and you just get on with it. And you relax into the game. I always felt that way playing Robert Thornton. I always felt like I could play my best game when against him. And it seems to be the case for Niels and Vessel. Got a couple of games that are locked at 5-5 five, five on the outer boards. Ron Mullenkamp and Josh Payne. And Robert Grundy against Jared Cole. They are going the distance right now. That's a nightmare visit from Reese Griffin. He's left a bogey number. And the gates. Okay, nice. right. So he wanted the single. He's hit the treble. He should be nowhere near it. Uh, Reese Griffin could see the funny side. I don't think Leonard's laughing. But it just goes to show that with the way his darts are sitting, that a single 19 there was not the right option. He should have gone for an 11. That involves doing some mental arithmetic. Now he can go for the treble. And he can't get it. So ironic, isn't it? He gets two in one visit, he gets none in the next. 65. Earlier on, we saw Connor Scott take this with treble 19 first. And that's one of the reasons why Connor went for treble 19. Yeah, it's a lovely there. conversion though from Reese. Well, well, Leonard Gates wasn't a miscount, but it was a, a miscalculation, if you like. Game on. Busting his score on the treble 19 when he wanted a single 19. And it has allowed Reese Griffin to get a leg on the board. And it's against the darts as well. It could be an important moment in this yeah, game. I mentioned earlier that Reese Griffin made his debut in this tournament in 2014, lost to Carl Merchant in that tournament. After beating Paul Whitworth in his debut match by five legs to nil. He was here in 2021. He beat Mike Decker by six legs to four. And then lost to Karol Sedlacek, who was lost on this board this afternoon. But I think Reese is at the point of his career now where he's ready to move forward. He's ready to become the player that he's always promised to be. The only thing that's really changed is his haircut. And that has changed rather drastically. Yeah, it used to be long blonde hair. He could have easily graced the band Poison. But now he's more Backstreet Boy. Now then. Trading 180s. Griffin can't take the 170. 45. And he's Leonard not taking a big chunk out of that it. either. This is a chunk. But not chunky enough. Yep, 80. 96. Three should go 125. Full 25 bull. 60 in tops. Real poor dart. Last one sort of saves him a bit, but maybe irrelevant. Through the middle. Not enough sauce on that one. Griffin's got options. Double 16 is the choice. And it's a very fine choice as well. This game has been flipped on its head. It's 2-0. And at that point, Griffin was not playing great. But now, he's got a fresh game on his hands. My 
he's been allowed back into this game by Leonard Gates. He continues to score heavily. It's 4-1-80 for Leonard Gates. But in the four legs we've had so far, Gates has won two of them at a canter, missed three clear darts at tops for another, and only got in trouble because he bust his score on 108 in the, the remaining leg. Look at him go again. It's five perfect darts to start the leg. For the second time in this match. He's a multi-skilled dart player. He's travelled the world in soft tip and been very successful in different promotions like Bull Shooter and Darts Live. But now he's predominantly playing in steel tip stuff. He was at the Las oh, Vegas Open. We didn't win that or the Las Vegas Classic because they were taken by the Canadians, Jacob Taylor and Jeff Smith. But he plays in a lot of those local American tournaments that you talk about where you've got to hit targets like this for different reasons. You can't hit double top at all at the minute. 20. Struggling with doubles. Reese Griffin back in the 300s here. That was for a 10 darter. Leonard Gates when he was first looking at tops. He's scoring magnificently. It's the back end of legs where he's having the problem. Let's see how good he is on 20 this time. Yeah, that'll do. Second time in the game he's taken it with one dart. That, that visit, so 3 2 Gates, I think, is a pretty fair result at this point. Well, Reese Griffin has managed to win the two legs where he's got down to any kind of finish. The other three legs, he has been nowhere near it. See? Because Gates is obliterating him in the scoring. And if this continues, he's going to get chances every single... Look at this! 140. His first nine average must be absolutely monstrous, Leonard Gates. His overall average must be pretty good. I'd love to tell you we don't have that information. 58. Maybe he just really likes playing in red. Because he's hitting that red an awful lot. Oh, whatever he's doing. If he if he scores like this over the course of this weekend, Landy Gates is going to be a danger. He is not going to be a danger if he finishes like this. Because he'll get punished eventually. But cannot stop hitting trouble 20. I maintain there's definitely a little tweak going on here with the either the equipment or the grip because they're going in flatter. And it looks like a slightly shorter setup as well. He's one of those players who tends to use the add on weight in the middle of the setup as well. Like Steve Hine used to do and still does actually. But it's the bullseye for Gates for 4 2. Bingo right in the middle. That's a wonderful shot. Honestly, he completed that pass to the bullseye better than a CJ Stroud pass play it to anybody oh. going down the flank as a wide receiver. That was such a great shot. Well, the former baseball player. I uh, don't know why he's gone for the bullseye there. I, I'm not sure he's given it much though. I don't think you get any benefit. Soft tip behaviour. Now, where oh, have we said not. that before? Oh, that's I mean, right. Jose de Souza. Well, look, I mean, at 25 would have left 360, and I suppose you can go 180, 140, leave yourself tops. Maybe there is some thinking ball. behind it. I don't think there is, though. Probably not. But we like Mavericks. Yeah, and look, it's, it's fascinating. Plays the game oh, differently so. from the vast majority of players out there. But my word, he plays it well. Someone who has played exceptionally well on board four is Vessel Nyman, who has won that game with Neil Zonneveld, averaging over 103. That is the highest average we've seen so far. Probably. We don't have stats for all the games. But it is right up there. Vessel Nyman is a dangerous player. He could do some damage, but Mike Dedeka is his third round opponent. It could be a real cracker of a game now. Oh, and Bates is currently 5 1 up on oh. Graham Usher as well. Oh, he's really starting to find his feet. Very close to home. Griffin's not going to take this out, which means that 5 2 beckons. 75. 96. Let just get the maths right. 96. Get the route right. Get the execution right, and you will be within one of the next round. Oh, 
That's the plan, Lenny. Well, I went looking for the 16 and didn't find it. And look, even when, look, the numbers are right, but it's taken him a moment. It knocks him out of his rhythm. And you think that he's going to cost you sometimes. He almost looked lost on that shot. That was a very, very normal steel tip shot that you'll find yourself on a lot of the time. 72. You can't help but giggle a little bit at what happened there, but Griffin is starting to fall behind. Now, he's just checking his score again. He's definitely got 32 left. He's definitely got nothing left, and now he is within one of the next rounds. Are you watching, Jim Williams? Well, the, the only times that Reese Griffin has had chances in this game is when Leonard Gates has allowed him to have chances in this game by missing doubles because the scoring I mean this could be a third 180 for Reese Griffin and it is but so many times he has been left trailing in Leonard Gates dust have you noticed how many dark players do that though they look almost disconsolate at a 180 and what you're supposed to do be happy that you hit it not be displeased that it hasn't been hit previously as much as you would want move forward win the next four legs and make yourself feel better well there was a snarl at missing the fifth dart for the nine darter there for Reese Griffin and for once he finds himself well clear of Leonard Gates at the start of a leg could be a temporary reprieve however comebacks do happen on this stage we've seen them in previous years in fact, the best game that I can ever remember on this stage was between Dirk van Dijvenborde and Ryan Searle, who will definitely come into this tournament as one of the favourites. Quite like that play, but it's not gone well. He was thinking one treble 19 and a couple of singles leaves him 32. Didn't need to worry about taking out in that visit but ultimately he hasn't taken a big chunk out of it. That's a lovely dart to leave double 14. Yeah. Oh, really yeah. nicely done by Reese Griffin. Griffin there. Outscored his opponent, pretty much the only time he's done that in this match, and then took out the 70 with a plomb. Have you noticed that more people are doing that now, that treble 14 double routine? It's not a bad route, is it? I don't mind it whatsoever. I think there's a lot more of the younger crop of players and by young I mean people in their 20s doing that than say going for 18s or 10s and I'm all for it just depends on how much you like double seven because every now and again you're going to need it yeah, very much a Mensor Sulevich route but it yeah, makes kind of sense Gates will not be doing anything fancy to leave a finish from 2-7-1. Some players are playing the 19 with the ball. Griffin needs three big trebles to get to a finish. He might do. This could change things. This could change things. 4-1-80s now for Reese Griffin. There's a little bit of Welsh fire there. And all of a sudden, he's not looking very ironically at the board, he's got his spirit back. Big ask to stay in the match. Now it's up to Gates to bring the hammer down. It's getting more and more difficult for Reese Griffin there. He's blocking his path to the treble. In the end, he goes into the one segment. He's still on the two data, but Gates has got a chance. Needs the treble. Does not get it. Reese Griffin, 97 points to break the throw. 52. They should have gone 97. This could have been a lot easier, but it's still a two data. Look on the bright side. 78 with two. There's an argument that he should have gone for double 19 for double top, but it's entirely up to Gates now to open the floodgates. He's missed a lot of doubles in this game. But he does not miss the double 10, and Leonard Gates, a stupendous scoring display, particularly in the first half of the match, put him in a great position. He closes it out on double 10.
and Leonard, despite busting his score with a check out of more than 100 at one stage, is through to round three where Jim Williams awaits.